home inspector Marco Vogue discovers a new ecosystem in the abandoned and now shut down auto greenhouses caused by too much government and too much regulations. Many years ago, the Otto family employed many local people that lived in the city of Ceylon, Ohio, which is located near Huron, Sandusky, and Vermilion. These local employees worked in many of the greenhouses cultivating plants, flowers, vegetables, and tomatoes. To understand why and what happened to the Ohio tomato greenhouse farmers, one needs to look at all the problems, setbacks, restrictions that have plagued Ohio tomato industry for the last 40 years. It started in the 1970s with the Campbell Soup Company, which began to purchase tomatoes from Mexico because they did not want to pay the higher tomato prices that resulted from the 1968 Union Formation of FLOC, the Farm Labor Organization Committee, which required better wages and better living conditions for the migrant workers. Then the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, imposed a coal-fired boiler restriction sulfur dioxide emission policies, which today are so strict that they are causing the shutdown of many American coal-fired electric generation plants and causing the layoffs of thousands of coal miners. It won't be long before your electric bill will be higher than your mortgage bill. Then came the tomato small white fly, which attacked the tomato plants throughout Ohio. The university scientists, professors, and administrators were too slow in studying the white fly because they were too busy doing things like rewriting American history books and increasing college tuition. Finally, the 1994 NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, removed import tariffs on Mexico, permitting Mexico to now export $5 billion a year in vegetables, including tomatoes and tomato paste, to the U.S., it's no wonder why Ohio tomato farms went from 30,000 acres in the late 60s to less than 5,000 acres in 2010 of tomato growth. According to some sources from the internet, the autos wanted to pump in free Lake Erie water to water their tomatoes instead of using the expensive city water. Allegedly, and according to the internet, a local plumber installed one of the pump pipe valves backwards, which resulted in flooding of hundreds of residential basements causing major damage. When we spoke to one of the Otto family members about this event, they said this story was not accurate. They stated that the straw that broke the camel's back was it took too long for the local university scientists to come up with methods to control the devastating white fly that was killing the tomato plants. As you can see from this video, indoor greenhouse tomato farming shut down, but Mother Nature is still alive and well. Foliage continues to grow so good that it outgrows the greenhouse roofs. Some of the trees growing through the glass roofs are already 18 inches in diameter. The greenhouse broken panes of glass permit rain entry, bird entry, vermin entry, mammal entry, bee entry, and insect entry. While in the greenhouse, you could hear woodpeckers pecking, birds chirping, and groundhogs digging. If you spend the night, you may be lucky to see coyotes hunt vermin. What has happened to the autos? and the Ohio tomato farming has happened to other industries throughout America. America is being downsized. Too much government and too much regulation have hurt the American businessman. Wait, I'm sorry. The word American soon will be removed from our history books. The Texas State Board of Education has proposed to change the word American with global citizen. That's right, folks. Soon you will no longer be Americans, but rather global citizens. Thank you. This is Marco Volk from www houseinvestigations.com please subscribe and rate please watch my other youtube videos if you like more house information please go to my website you can also subscribe to my website for the latest home materials thank you